I'm back and I'm on a roll. Welcome to number three of the Bible says this. What say you? I'm talking about the upcoming presidential elections. You got Donald J. Trump, the businessman, and Hillary Rodham Clinton, first female to run for the office of the presidency to be at the top of the ticket. You know, when she ran in 2008, she didn't get the top of the ticket. Uh, President Barack Hussein Obama got that one and uh, ran on, ran and became the president of the United States. They have served two terms. And now here we are uh, in this presidential election. Now, the Bible says this, Psalm 33, verse 4, the A clause, for the word of the Lord is right. So welcome back to this, this, this conversation. I'm talking and I'm fired up. Listen, listen, listen. I'm glad to be talking to you again. I hope, I hope, yeah, I hope that I make you think. I hope that I challenge you. I hope that you, those who I, I make cringe, I, you, 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 you're truly the ones that I want to go, you to go out there and just do your research so you can find me wrong. And you'll discover that the word of the Lord is right. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. Speaking of the word of the Lord, Psalms 9 and 17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations, not three, but all the nations that forget God. In this presidential election, Donald J. Trump unshackles churches from the Johnson Amendment. Um, I want to read the excerpts of, 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 a, of a speech that he gave. Um, this is a part of a, a, a Robert Krachik, K-R-A-Y-C-H-I-K. I hope that I got his name right. I'm known for getting the names wrong. But they get my name wrong all the time. People call me Wooten, 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 Wooden. I don't know what's difficult about Wooden. But anyway, Donald Trump. All right. Quote, here's what's, here's what's being said. Uh, Donald Trump interrupted by a pastor during church visit. Quote, Mr. Trump, Army Chaplain, who is also a ranger, Joe Lawhorn, had a potentially career-ending reprimand for the crime of using scripture while mentoring a suicide prevention class. The crime of using scripture. Navy chaplain Wes Molder, who is uh, present day, who is present day, was detached for calls and threatened with separation for using biblical answers to questions during pastoral counseling sessions with sailors in his command. Do you hear this? Decorated veteran and retired Air Force Sergeant Oscar Rodriguez uh, was forcefully removed from a friend's retirement ceremony because he intended to use the word God in that retirement ceremony. Marine Corporal Monifa Sterling was convicted at a court martial from failing to remove scripture from her personal workspace. Today's commanders are prohibited from having Bibles on their desk or using scripture when they're counseling troops. The Obama administration, and those of you who say I support Obama, you support this. And remember, let me go back to the Bible. Psalms 19, Psalms 9 and verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell in every nation that forget God. The Obama administration has deliberately set out to take Christian religion out of the military. Mr. Trump, how will you and your administration combat these attacks on religious freedom? Proposed by a Democrat. Okay, so this man gives this litany of things that are taking place, th these attacks on the Christian religion. Now, this is another uh, 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 a report here that says, excuse me, uh, Republican presidential nominee Donald J. Trump has vowed to repeal the Johnson Amendment because he says 
It infringes on the freedom of speech of religious groups. Uh, here is what you need to know about this amendment. Among the topics that Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump is expected to raise when he meets uh, the evangelical Christian pastors today in Orlando is the Johnson Amendment. Trump has repeatedly vowed to get rid of uh, the tax rule that, that London B. Johnson, London Bain Johnson introduced in 1954 while running for re-election as a Texas senator, a provision that some religious groups and churches consider an infringement on their freedom of, of speech. This is a quote, I am going to work very hard to repeal that language and to protect free speech for all Americans, Trump said during his speech at the National Republican Con Convention in uh, in uh, Cleveland. Now, um, I, as a preacher, would love to see the Johnson Amendment repealed. I would love to see it replaced. Uh, I don't know of any preacher who wouldn't want to see it repealed and replaced and where we could have a little more freedom where our 501c3 tax uh, 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 exempt status won't be threatened or uh, simply because we have an opinion on politics. This was practiced for over 200 years in our country. And since 1954, the churches, some have been silenced. Well, now, if uh, the Johnson Amendment and repealing this and allowing preachers to have more freedom to say what thus saith the Lord matters to you, then you might consider voting for the person who is who's considering uh, uh, removing uh, the, the, the Johnson Amendment. And if it doesn't, then don't vote for that person. You vote any way you want. But as a Christian, I approach things from a biblical point of view. Now, many of you have said to me, what Bishop wouldn't, Pastor wouldn't, Doctor wouldn't, Foolish wouldn't, stupid wouldn't, ignorant wouldn't, backwards Wooten don't understand is you have to separate your religion from your politics. Well, what Jesus said, what God said to Wooden is, in all thy ways acknowledge me and I'll direct your path. Now I'm going along with God. How long are you going to live? How long are you going to be here? 70 years, 80 years, maybe 100? In time, you'll be forgotten and your words and your advice. But the word of the Lord is forever. And people who obey God's word, man, we're going to end up in heaven. So I'm going to side with God. I've gotten into a lot of trouble for siding with God. But you know what? I'm like Paul. Out of them all, the Lord has delivered me. So my friends, the, there's a lot that's going on. And uh, I, I think that we should, uh, that we should want uh, this freedom. Now, I've never heard. I've heard that this is a weird political season, and man, let me tell you, uh, there's one candidate out there, old Trump, he has thrown some zingers. He's used language that I would, would not use, um, uh, that I don't even think is, is, is even appropriate uh, for any presidential uh, speech. Um, um, and, 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 and some of the attacks that the media has waged on him have been self afflicted wounds, and some have, quite frankly, uh, in my opinion, been contrived. But um, this is one thing that he said that I, I, I do agree with. Uh, Donald Trump is a man of principle who speaks the truth. Now, this is, this is um, I'm reading an article from, from Kozar. Um, Donald Trump has an urgent message for, of all people, Christians. Every Christian should see this. Let me read this to you. This is not, you know, you, you decide whether or not it matters to you. Donald Trump is a man of uh, principle who speaks the truth. Now he is sounding the alarm as we do not have someone in the White House willing to represent Christians on the world stage. Trump pledged to stand for Christianity. Uh, as he explained in an interview, one of the things I learned this week being in Iowa I met with a lot of national security experts and everything else. If you're a Christian living in Syria, you can't come into this country. Yet, if you're a Muslim living in, in Syria, you are not under attack. They can come in. But we have Christians being beheaded all over the world by ISIS 
in Syria and in Iraq, in particular, those Christians can't come into this country. You say what you want, but this is really something. Uh, that's a lack of respect for us. If you're a Muslim, you can come into the country very easy. Easy. If you're from Europe and you're a Muslim, you can come in. But if you are from Europe and you're a Christian, you can't come in. Meaning it's almost impossible. Um, now, I'll be honest with you. I've never heard. I, mean, I really, I feel funny. I, I've never heard any political candidate, Republican nor Democrat, use the word Christians as, as, as much as uh, Donald Trump has with regard to defending Christians. Now, President Obama did say we Christians need to get off our high horse for we've committed a many atrocities in the name of Christ. Now, he did say that at a prayer breakfast after Christians had been beheaded. But he won't say uh, extreme Islam, Islamist terrorists and anything like that. Uh, but he has said that about Christians. But I, I'm not accustomed to hearing a politician pledge to stand for Christianity and, to, and admit that Christians, you know, I mean, we, we've heard politicians say, well, I'm a man of faith and the religious community this and the religious community that. But to single out the most persecuted and maligned faith in this country, Christianity, you know yourself, you have to admit, even in America today, you know, Christians, Christians are being plummeted. Uh, uh, we got a presidential candidate that says the black church needs to change its stance on the LGBT community. We're not going to do it. At least I'm not going to do that. Uh, and, and if it is true, one thing we do know, when you look at the refugees, um, the migrants who have been allowed to come into this country from Syria and other places, they've been overwhelmingly Muslim and non-Christian, it's very difficult for the Christians to come in. And all we hear on the news is, and all we hear the, the other political candidates say is, oh, we're not going to keep people out of the country just because they're Muslim. Yeah, but no one says we're not going to let them in. Uh, we're not going to keep them out just because they're Christians. Now, if a political candidate speaking favorably of Christianity and Christian views and speaking up for Christians and Christianity in America uh, is to your liking, then you may want to consider that person. And if stuff like that don't matter to you, then don't vote for an individual. Uh, vote any way you want. But I think it's amazing that, uh, that uh, and, and, and what's amazing is it's, it's the most least likely man. I mean, a billionaire who has uh, made his fortune building casinos and hotels and businesses and, 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 and as far as I know, has never been particularly religious and, and can be, uh, 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 you know, foul mouthed and say things that I most certainly wouldn't say. And yet it's this person who is speaking for Christians when the current occupier of the White House has passed, who has changed uh, our country, who speaks down on Christianity, who says nothing uh, favorable about Christianity, who says that the most wonderful sounds that he heard coming up as a boy was his, uh, the Muslim prayers that he heard prayed in Indonesia. This is according to his own book, who says glowing things about Islam and never praises Christianity. I think that, man, what kind of universe, what kind of world is this that we're living in? And very few preachers will say this stuff to you, but I will. I'm here. My friends, the Bible says this. What say you? Again, vote any way you want. Vote for who you want. But think about it.